Hi everyone, Alison Davis here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in today. Today's video is all about the lead wrist and its journey from setup to the top of the backswing and down into impact. And in order to help me demonstrate for you how the wrist works in my golf swing, which is not perfect, but in my golf swing, I'm gonna use hack motion here, a 3D sensor to measure the movements of my wrist and share that data with you to show you the journey of my wrist and talk to you about the ideal pattern, not necessarily the ideal number, because I don't believe in really prescribing numbers for people to hit in terms of things like this, but we definitely want patterns and also show you what happens when you overdo certain elements and how that affects the club face and other things in the golf swing. Now, if you are a new viewer, please consider following and subscribing. I'd love to have you on board my channel. I'd love to help you golf and make you enjoy your golf a little bit more. Also, if you do enjoy the videos you go along, please remember to click like, that really helps my channel. Also ask questions as you go along, post comments. Tell me what you think of this device, tell me what you think of your lead wrist and tell me how you think you need to change yours to make you a better player. So, okay, we're looking at the left wrist or lead wrist journey in the golf swing. I've got hack motion on here, as I said in the introduction. This is measuring exactly what my wrist does from start to finish in the golf swing. So I wanna talk you through some numbers, some positions, and how it correlates to the numbers. And then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about, obviously, uh, there's no such thing as probably ideal, but the idea is really trying to get a good pattern of movement would be the key thing for me. So as I take my address position in my grip, and my grip is fairly neutral, I would say it can go a little bit strong if anything, but my grip is fairly neutral if I'm trying to get it neutral. My lead wrist there at the start has got about 20 degrees of extension. 18, 20 degrees, 18, 19 degrees is moving around. It's a very sensitive bit of kit. So if I do that, it goes to 20. If I do that, it goes down. As you can see, it's constantly moving. But the idea would be there would be some cupping of the wrist at address, okay? In order to take an effective and efficient and neutral grip, there'll be some cupping of the wrist. And you see here, it fluctuates between probably... 15 odd degrees, there you are, it's gotten down to a little bit lower than that now, as I take both hands on the club, so 13 degrees, uh, and it'll probably fluctuate between there and 20 something degrees. I tend to see that with most golfers, it'll move around, uh, and, you know, and there's no set pattern, it depends on the size of the hands and so on. The key thing is there is some angle of the wrist at address. Now, as we make the backswing, that angle would be roughly the same in the takeaway position. Again, we don't want these wrists to change. If I get too much flexion, you'll see here the club will start to go behind me. If I get loads of cupping, the face will start to want to open and the club will get more in front of me. So I'm trying to keep that number, without actually trying to keep it, roughly about the same. Now as I'd work to the top, I'd want to see this extension in my wrist to start to decrease, the number to decrease. But I'd want to get that up to somewhere around about zero, which it is there at the top of the swing. Now, I know in my golf swing, it's not zero at the top. If I probably hit a shot without warming up, which is where I am today, it's gonna to be in the 20s somewhere. I would know as a golf coach, I want to reduce that amount. But I can also show you loads of elite golfers that number will be 20 or 30 degrees. But the key thing is in the downswing from there, see I've got 17 degrees there, that number would reduce and it'd get more into flexion, which gets this club face into a stronger position. It also helps flexing the wrist to get the club behind the hands to deliver the club with the correct path. And at impact, most elite golfers would be in the minus numbers. Uh, I've seen kind of minus 10, minus eight, minus 11 for most elite golfers. When we're talking about poorer golfers, we might well see this wrist still in the cup state at impact. Now there, right there is 31 degrees. So 31 degrees of extension. When we're talking 12 degrees of flexion, that's how it would look different. So the ideal scenario and the ideal message to take home from this video is really your wrist starts being cupped. We want to maintain the cupping probably till we get to about hip high. And I'm not constantly trying to maintain the cup, I'm just not trying to lose it, I'm just trying to take the club back. And as we go to the top swing from there, that wrist will go flatter. The amount would vary golfer to golfer. As I said, some golfers will maintain that number. We certainly wouldn't want it getting more extended. So if I get that up to 50 degrees there, that club face really opens up. And that's not where I'd want to be as a player. And as a coach, it's not where I'd want you to be as a player. If that face gets very open, we're going to have to flap at the ball. 
like mad to hit an effective shot. Now then, let's go ahead and hit one and see what my numbers actually do when I hit a ball. Okay, just turned it over a touch. So, at the dress, I was about 12 degrees. Top of the swing, I was 12 degrees. and the impact, I was minus 18. So, for me, I probably... Too much flexion, really, with the wrist at the start. I probably want to see a little bit more than 12 with my grip, so I need to have a little look at my grip. It might be a little bit too much in my palm there. And at the top of the swing, 12 degrees, I'd be pretty happy with that for me. And at, eight, at impact, minus 18, it shows that my wrist is getting into that flexion state. And for me, the key thing, as I said to you already, is to get that kind of pattern going from a cup state, going into more flexion or nearer to flexion or nearer to zero, and then increasing that flexion on the way down to give you strong, powerful golf shots would be the key things. As I said, if I take my grip here now and I go into a much stronger grip, much more in the fingers, like it's into the 20s, okay? Go much more in the palm, and you see here it goes more like two degrees. So, you know, as I said, we want to be somewhere, depending on the size of your hands, I would say between kind of 10 and 30 degrees there at address. And at the top of the swing, somewhere between zero and 30 degrees would be good too. And on the downswing, getting stronger, get into the minus fingers, our impact would be ideal. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video looking at the numbers and the journey of the lead wrist in the backswing and downswing to provide you with more solid, powerful golf shots. If you have enjoyed it, please click like and share the video. I really appreciate if you can do that. I also welcome you to ask questions and also suggest videos for me to cover and which is kind of how this video came out. Someone asked me the question about the lead wrist at address and this journey. So this is why this video came out. So thank you for that question and also send more in. Also, if you haven't subscribed to follow me already, please hit my lower down this bottom corner. Join me in my journey and let me help you lower your scores and improve your golf. So thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again here soon.